To successfully live in trees, orchids have developed the ability to absorb moisture from the air via a succulent, spongy outer coating on their stem and leaves, as well as to use their roots directly to photosynthesize. One orchid, for instance, doesn't even have any leaves. It just uses its roots for all energy production from the sun. For the species that haven't evolved to live in trees, the other main running theory for their inexplicable ability to diversify lies in how specialized their flowers are at getting pollinated. For one, some orchid species are the ultimate swingers. They're very lenient in their sex lives and can produce fertile offspring with orchids from some other species, making them more likely to reproduce and more likely to often birth unique new hybrid species. To ensure pollination, some orchids also strike up an evolutionary deal with local fauna. The plant evolves a flower so intricate it's only accessible to a couple types of insects, and those insects are sure to only really ever pollinate other orchids. One of these striking examples is the orchid Darwin had grown obsessed with, known as Darwin's Orchid or the Star of Bethlehem Orchid, which has evolved a 12 inch long and narrow satchel for its nectar so that only the hawk moth with an exceptionally long proboscis can access it. Although Darwin had already mused on this possibility, the moth hadn't yet been discovered. So his theory was only confirmed about four decades later in 1903.